Hello, my dear people. Hello, friends. Falcha is Jock. Good G on Laurelin Shin is Misha. Laurelin Shu is Misha Anton. August thought brought our own Falcha to bestow on you. What's that in Irish? <laughs> Uh, I give uh, yeah, fortune, Jack. <laughs> Kate Mila fortune. Well, it's still winter. It's still January, but we are now a full month on from the moment of winter solstice. The days are lengthening. In bulk is just round the corner. This year, we will be celebrating fifteen hundred years of Saint Bridget. Uh, in uh, early February, a uh, couple of weeks' time. Less than a couple of weeks' time. But uh, not forgetting, of course, that long before there was a goddess, Bridget. Sorry, long before there was a saint, Bridget, there was a goddess, Bridget. You're all very welcome to episode number 261 tonight. I am going to try to endeavor to continue identifying the top 50 books that you should read if you're interested in learning about Irish mythology. It's a difficult list to compile in terms of what goes where. I will do my best to give you the next 10. We are today trying to ascertain what will occupy spaces 21 to 30 on the list. And as I've been reiterating over the past uh, two episodes, uh, none of this is cast in stone. You may find that you have a, a, a much higher place for one and a much lower place for another than I uh, am perhaps giving them. Anyway, we're going to try and do all of that. In the meantime, I am delighted to announce, speaking of books, that work is progressing on the Four Knox monograph. You may remember that months ago, I announced that the third in the series of Mythical Ireland monographs will be a book about Four Knox, which apart from the excavator, the archeologist PJ Hartnett's paper on the excavations published in 1957 in the Proceedings of the Royal Irish Academy, which isn't technically a book, but it is kind of. Apart from this, there is no single book about Four Knox. You want to learn about Four Knox, you need this, and you need lots of archaeology papers and books. I am endeavouring to put everything into one place. It won't be an exhaustive guide to Four Knox. Um, if you've seen the previous monographs, you'll know that they're small books. They're booklets, really. Finn and the Salmon of Knowledge was the first one. Uh, just waiting for that to be reprinted. Uh, Bowen, the goddess of the River Boyne and the Milky Way, and that one runs to 104 pages. I suspect uh, Four Knox will end up being equal to the thickness of those two books put together. It's going to be bigger than those two, and consequently probably be a little bit more expensive, but that's okay. Um, I'm sure you will uh, all be excited about it when it comes out. I know I'm excited about it because... I've been giving tours at Four Knox for a long time. Uh, on Saturday last, Richard Moore and I, celebrating 25 years of friendship, research and discovery, uh, co-hosted a megalithic adventure. And we visited Four Knox, the Hill of Tara and Douth. I'm glad to say that despite the wind uh, and the cold temperatures, the rain held off until the last moment we were getting into our cars outside Douth at 5 p.m. at the very end of the day when it started raining. I tell you, that was just serendipity. So, Four Knox, I'm not pre ordering is not just available yet and won't be until I have a good idea how thick the book is. Because when I know how thick the book is, I will then be able to get proper printing quotes for the book uh, and to judge it accordingly. If you're willing, by the way, to uh, 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 help with the sponsorship of reprinting the Finn monograph, the first in the series. Uh, please drop me a, a private message on Facebook or on Instagram or send me an email, mythicalireland at gmail.com. There's a contact me page on the Mythical Ireland website. Um, I need to get this reprinted. It's out of print at the moment. Uh, if you're willing to help with that, if you maybe, um, yeah, would like to help and get your name uh, on the uh, inside uh, front cover. But the Four Knox one I am very excited about. I, I halted it, I halted work on it to concentrate on finishing the Return to Segish volume, which is the largest book I've ever written at 138,000 words. 
I'm proofreading that slowly. I'm sharing it with uh, Mythical Ireland patrons at the Bronze Age level and above, two pages at a time. If you want to read that, patreon.com forward slash Mythical Ireland is the address to go to and become a Bronze Age patron. Anyway, so yeah, I'm uh, uh, not to reiterate or repeat, but I will repeat. I'm very excited about the Four Knox monograph. Um, first book entirely about Four Knox and designed to be a guide for anybody who's interested in what is this monument about? Where does it fit in in terms of the other monuments? How does it differ? Um, what was found during the excavations? What's the, what? What is the megalithic art there? What is the possible astronomical orientation of it? What is the mythology associated with Fornox? All that stuff. So I'm really excited now because I can feel that I've gotten over the hump. I was, I was in a bit of a hump, a bit of a, you know, when you come up against a blockage as a writer and there's too much going on and you, you need, well, I've come back to it after several months of not doing anything on it and suddenly I have a burst of energy um, so I'm really excited about that. Keep an eye on the social media, on the Facebook page and the Instagram and the Twitter and, of course, the website, the blog on mythicalireland.com um, because I'll be announcing um, pre-sales of it soon, I hope. As soon as I kind of feel that the bulk of the text is written and I'm at the stage where, yep, yeah, it's almost finished and now I need to proofread and edit and, you know, um, find the last of the you know, uh, source the last of the, the images that are needed for, I need to take some as well. Uh, as soon as I get to that stage, I think it'll be available for pre-ordering. I better say hello to some people. El Elaine Dent Lingenfelter is first in the house, unsurprisingly. Six Celsius. Well, it's actually five here. So you're one degree warmer than us. It's not often you can say that the Texans are only one degree warmer than the Irish. Good afternoon, Elaine. Hope you're in good form. Anna L is down the road. Good evening to you, Anna L. Hope you're in good form. And that that storm yesterday uh, didn't uh, do any damage or put you out too badly. We're very we're very lucky. I was sitting here last night working on the Four Knox monograph. Lights kept flickering. Uh, messages on WhatsApp from family members saying their electricity was out. We were very lucky. Uh, touch wood. It's to be another storm tomorrow. So fingers crossed that it'll be okay. Uh, no, no, no substantial uh uh, difficulties. Joe Butler, Auntie Joe is in Colorado. Sunny and cold, but gorgeous. Do you know what? You may have seen some of my images. I was busy last week. Frosty, sunny weather. Perfect for picturing mon uh, monuments, especially from the drone, from the air. So, um, yeah. And sharing those with patrons first and foremost. They're getting the really exciting stuff. Johnny Wilson is also in te Texas where it is a cold, sleety, rainy day. Stay indoors, Johnny, by the sounds of it. Stay by the fire. Rex Fortenberry is in Louisiana. All hail the mighty Tua. Lang may your lambs reek. What does that mean? Is that a colloquial uh, phrase from your part of the world, Rex? What's the, what's the weather like there, by the way? Jacqueline Kelly Adams is in the house. I hope you are well. It's trying to thaw out here in the Columbia Gorge area. Well, let's hope it succeeds in thawing and it doesn't try too hard that it just gets on with it. Sandra Boothroyd, hope you're not all blown away by the weather. No, I think we were lucky. Uh, quite a lot of trees down all over the place last night too. Um, but uh, I'm fine anyway. We're all good here. So thank, thanks for asking. Lexi Erickson is in Denver, Colorado, where it's warmer today. Yeah, but like, what's the temperature? Is it still in the minus, you know? When you say it's warmer, like warmer than what? Warmer than the Arctic? I, I'm only joking, Lexi. Of course, Lexi is one of the biggest supporters of Mythical Ireland. Lexi is a patron as well. Uh, Lexi, always uh, very grateful for your interactions. And one of the most, uh, shall we say, one of the most, I was going to say one of the most interactive people, one of the most, um, one of the people who uh, interacts quite a lot on all the posts online so it's great anyway lexi thanks very much for that stay warm stay safe tuesday thompson is saying happy mythology monday love that should we change the day of the live stream so that we could say happy tuesday to tuesday thompson uh, we do occasionally have to change it to a tuesday adina sparks is in the house cool but sunny day new mexico looking forward to the next part of our book list as am i adina always a pleasure to see you barbara murphy another murphy in the house Working at the Tucson Gem Show, so I'll have to catch up tonight. Cold and wet here. Everyone be well and happy. Well, enjoy the Gem Show. 
and uh, we'll see you on the replay. But here's your hello, Barbara, and uh, I hope you're in good form. And uh, of course, uh, Barbara and Lexi will have their own conversation. And Scott Darty is saying good Monday slash Tuesday to everyone. Haven't seen any Australians or New Zealanders announcing themselves just yet, but I'm sure there'll be a few along. Um, and always a pleasure. Hope you're in good form. Say hello to Bill as well. Wayne Bird is saying, hope everyone is well and safe in the stormy weather. Likewise, did you get much of it over there, Wayne? It was quite bad here, actually. It was one of the worst storms we've had um, in several years. And we get these red orange warning systems and should we get them so often sometimes we don't know what, what it's going to be like but it was a severe storm michael pike is in the house michael is also a mythical ireland patron michael what a pleasure hope you've been enjoying the little video clips and the photographs and everything on patreon simon oh too so far says good evening anthony from a nice calm post storm pre-storm kinsale do you know i've said it before simon i absolutely love Kinsale. I think it's one of the most beautiful parts of Ireland, the old head of Kinsale in particular. The town of Kinsale is beautiful and, and, and the way the bay is laid out and all the, the yachts and the private boats and everything and uh, Charles Fort and all of that. But there's just something very, very special about the old head of Kinsale. We were down there last November on a bit of a family holiday. You, you might remember some of you, the van broke down on the way. But um. I was up there on the old head of Kinsale at night with the stars out taking pictures. And I was in my element. I really was. Or Burgess is saying, whose name is, it's not Ruby, it's not Rebecca, or, or, oh, you should know this. Another chilly afternoon in New York. Perfect day to curl up with a good book. What have you got for us? <laughs> yeah, I'll give you dozens of recommendations. And the problem is, you'll be like, oh, my God, I'm snowed under. Yeah, start with my kill up, you know, and just uh, take it from there. Uh, who else? Catherine Cleary, is it? Yes. Happy to join you from a very unusually but welcome rainy day in San Diego. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't say it rains much in San Diego. But, yeah, as you say, Catherine, it's welcome. And I uh, hope you're in good form. Good afternoon to you. Yeah, Four Knox. A lot of people talking about Four Knox, which is brilliant. Brendan Byrne has to work. Oh, no. Brendan, do you want me to talk to the boss? Give me his or her number. Unless you're self-employed like me. I am the boss. <laughs> you know how that goes. Hello, Anthony. Yeah, it's Anthony here. Uh, I, I need time off uh, because the two need me. <laughs> as, as myself and Tom King are always joking because, because you know, he's self-employed and I'm self-employed. If you see me talking to myself, I'm just having a staff meeting. Brendan, I'm very disappointed, but at the same time, completely understand. We'll catch up with you later. Um, Arc Astronomy Database is saying the moon is waxing full and reaching its northern standstill for the month. Yes, and I saw your post about that. I'm going to try and get to Mount B on Thursday morning. I need to get permission to go down there. Uh, I also need to get out, out of my bed early, but if I can, I will. And if I think the weather is going to uh, comply, I definitely will, will try um, at the very least. Um, so we'll see how we'll see how that goes. Um, speaking of which, the uh, uh, Newgrange Farm uh, Archaeological uh, Park and Newgrange Chamber tours uh, have been announced for this year and the dates. If you click the link in the bottom of that link, I'm just linking you to the blog post about it. But there's a link to the Your Days Out website which shows you the dates that are available, just in case you wanted to book it. Um, so Ty, I will try, uh, but won't make any promises. Um, not working on Thursday morning as in work, work. Um, so yeah, fingers crossed. Um, no, um, I'm after missing. I've just missed now my place. Oh, here we go. Josie Weatherford is here. Hope everyone is still okay after the storm and that no one's wheelie bins blew away or they're trampolines. Uh, Debbie Sheehy is in Melbourne. Good morning. Really looking forward to the work on Fornox being completed. Yeah, I, I'm, 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 I'm really excited about it now, Debbie. And I think that even though I'm not an archaeologist, it'll be a good summary of the, uh, the reason that Fornox is so special, a very singular monument. Um, yeah, really looking forward to having it and signing copies to be sent out around the world really 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 excited caroline dash says good evening hello caroline how are you keeping 
Lexi says it's 11 Celsius in Denver, but much warmer than last week. 11, yeah, it could be. That's that's sort of proper low pressure temperature weather here in Ireland. Virgo Canton is in Kilkenny. Wetty, wetter, <laughs> windy, warmer Ireland. What can I say, Virgo? It's just the country we live in, you know. Caroline says we seem to be getting more of these storms since they started naming them. Yeah, Mavanway is in the house. It's been a long time. I've been battling the winter bugs and hibernating, but glad to join you for a bit this eve. Loved your beautiful frosty photos of the monuments, Anthony. Hope everyone's well. Brilliant stuff, Mavanway. And glad to see you. Keep well. Get well. Hope you're um, getting over the winter bugs. Tom King is in the house. A quick hello and best wishes to all. I'm on show duty at Showcase in Dublin. Enjoy the story. Catch up on the replay sometime soon. And of course, Tom was the overall winner. Best product at uh, um, uh, Showcase last year. And of course, that was for his most wonderful beautiful uh hand forged steel bridget's cross and i will share a link to that just in case you're new and you haven't seen those they're fab fantastic pieces of extremely wonderful craftsmanship i can't say enough about them tom enjoy the show and we'll catch up with you when you get back uh break a leg as they say uh who else am i missing every time i paste something i go right to the bottom of the comments and i have to scroll back up to find where i was my vanway there's tom rex says actually it's scottish long may your chimney smoke <laughs> brilliant love it um and mccallum is in the house hello anton and all the mighty two are glad to be inside ready for the live stream a bit warmer but still well into the negatives mm. and i got an email or a message from you and i can't remember which uh and i'm glad to hear that that thing made made it over the ocean to you um so Anne is another uh, of the Mythical Ireland patrons. Uh, and really uh, delighted to do that for you, by the way. Um, I, I, there's just something about uh, a letter uh, that just an email just doesn't do it, you know. It's lovely to receive a physical letter, you know. Um, okay, uh, sorry, I get, got distracted there. Uh, Catherine Fitzgerald uh shramek is saying good afternoon from texas loving your accent <laughs> well thank you catherine and we have a a pocket of viewers in texas mythical ireland has a big following down there catherine's great to see you good afternoon to you i hope you're keeping well and you're very welcome to live irish myths caitlin moon is in a blustery dublin preparing for my viva phd thesis defense that is next tuesday yeah and you had some ordeal getting back home my God, took you a week to get from Philadelphia to Dublin, but glad you made it safely and that you were in a bit better condition than some of the contents of your suitcase. Unbelievable stuff. Don Hilton is saying, good evening, everyone. So windy up Pendle Hill in Lancashire. Anthony, I located a huge Ravenhead Druid mound at St. Patrick's Chapel in Haysham. I'll be going over to film it soon. The Ravenhead looks northwest over the chapel. Sounds fascinating, Don. Uh, look forward to seeing the video. Uh, the full Irish Gary's in the house. Another fine day on the... Well, when you say another, another as in like we had last week, not like when what we had on Sunday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the wind, says Caroline, was 99 miles per hour in Northumberland. Really? That's like... <sighs> blow your house down territory. Alba Kelly, Trinonawa. Hope everyone is doing well. Well, I can't speak for everyone, but Alba, I'm in good form and I hope you are too. Um, where am I? Where am I? Where is the showcase? Is in the RDS, Caitlin, the Royal Dublin Society in Ballsbridge. Uh, Irish technical thinker, Gialath to a more. Hope you're all doing well. My massive willow tree out our back garden completely blew over, destroyed our fence, almost destroyed my expensive motorbike, saved by inches. Well, hey, look for silver linings and all that. Sorry about your tree. Oh, but you're safe. That's the main thing, Marcus. You didn't come to any harm. Uh, we can replace motorbikes. We can't replace you. Catins S saying, I visited Loch Roo for the first time last week. Incredibly beautiful experience. Isn't it just the most beautiful landscape? Those Texas viewers, says Ty, 
are in for a treat with the solar eclipse in April. Is it a total eclipse, uh, Ty, is it? Vicky Wallace Southern is in the house. Hello, beautiful people. Hello to Vicky. And if Evan is watching, hello, Evan. Good afternoon to you from Ireland. A very, very, very big hello to you and Chile. Erica Rivertree is saying, Bannock the old Louisville, Kentucky. Connors to talk to Tommy Kawa. Erica. Makarja. Makara. Um, great to see you, and I uh, hope likewise that you're in good form. Uh, Dina Sparks is saying hello to Vicky, and uh, of course, hugs and waves to Evan, Evan and Chili. Brilliant stuff. And Vicky is sending the are they purple hearts? Forgive me, color blindness. Um, yeah, so we're all caught up. So, <laughs> oh, small matter of having to pick the next 10. Oh. <laughs> Because <laughs> I was looking at this earlier, and, and I was just like, "What? What exactly have you done, Anthony? You know, what? What sort of, uh, you know, what sort of task have you set yourself at all?" Oh, okay. So, um, again, remember these aren't in strict order. Um, so we'll do our best. I think we're going to go go back slightly in terms of something that would be a nice not a nice easy read but uh not that academic and you know designed and written for a lay audience as it were or a you know a general audience as it were um yeah so and we've talked about it before and we've done i think we we had readings from this book um can't see it. I think it's behind that radio. You see that big radio over there? That's my big uh, uh, Grundig Satellite 2400. That's an old radio. I think it's from the 1980s, but it produce, it's got stereo speakers. It produces the most amazing sound. So when I want to listen to the radio, that is the best radio. Uh, it's brilliant. Uh, hang on a second. I think it's behind here. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Give me one moment, please. I apologize for the messing. I think I could have done this beforehand too, huh? And yeah, sorry. Just need to. It is the story of the Irish race by Shilmas McManus. This is a reprint. So this was originally published. I think I have more than one copy of this, by the way. Keep an eye out for my duplicates because I tend to sell them to the first buyer. Um, so this was originally, I'm trying to find out when it was originally published. Yes, originally published 1921. And this is a 1990 edition published by Wings Books. W-I-N-G-S. The story of the Irish race. So, um, so this is sort of part history and part mythology, and lots of very very short chapters. So it makes it you know if you wanted to read a chapter or two and put it, you didn't want to read a huge amount. But it's over seven hundred pages. It's a big book. But just to give you an idea of the contents, I'm going to see if I can. Get that focused and let you see that so that you can um, maybe pause. Hang on. I have to hold it and then adjust the focus. Give me one moment. See, St. Bridget is in there, look, and St. Patrick and the Brian Laws. But if you go back, you have some of the kings, Con, Con of the Hundred Battles, Cormac McArch, Tara, the Fairs, Fionn and the Fian. But if you go right back, you have the two of the Danon. Early colonizations, that's probably from Lower Gawala. Uh, the, I, I, I have to move it the opposite way to the way I think I have to move it. Um, and look, there's a chapter on Henry VIII's policies because they had a big effect on Ireland. And contents continue. I hope you can read that. Some of you who are on a phone may not be able to. But if you look at it later on a computer on pause, you should be able to see. Look, there's a chapter on the rising of 1641, the Ulster Plantation, Red Hugh O'Neill, Elizabeth and the Nine Years' War and all that stuff. So that's historical stuff. You may not be interested in that. Um, 
but McManus's book is uh, another nice. Yeah, and you you may not you refocus. You may not need to. In fact, you probably won't need to read the whole lot of it, uh, and that should help you in your perambulations through Irish mythology. Okay, that's twenty one. Okay. Now, the next one may seem to be just a little bit. Well, it's not really out of position. It's just that it deals with a very specific area of uh, culture and folklore and folk belief. Um, so let me just grab it for you. Uh, Irish Tackle and Thinker says, can we haggle for the books? I'll give you three, five, no, 11, 15, okay, nine. <laughs> Keith Doran is saying good morning from Australia. Happy Tuesday to you, Keith. Thanks for joining us. A very good morning to you. Good night from uh, the Boyne Valley in Ireland. Add to cart, says Caitlin. <laughs> Mine was published in 2018, says Anne McCallum. Ha-ha. And uh, she adds that that was the book she was going to suggest. Brilliant. Um, you've probably got five copies. No, because at that stage, I really have to, you know, there's nowhere to put books in this place, so I really have to. Right, I'm going to get this next book, which will be number 22. Uh, if I can reach it, and if I can find it. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Sorry, I've just seen another book that needs to be added to a list. Oh dear. And I have nowhere to add it. So probably what will end up happening at the end, when we've done 50, I'll do an episode where there'll be a ton of extra stuff. I'll be like, also put these on your list. And they won't be like 51, 52, 53. It'll just be a jumble of books and sources and resources for you to use. So this one, um, I really like. If you're interested in celebrations at various times of the year, so like you'll know that we had, we rated very highly uh, Moira McNeil's The Festival of Lunasa. Uh, I don't think it was in the top 10, but it could easily have been. And where did we put The Festival of Lunasa? Number 12, yeah. A remarkable piece of work but that deals with just one of the many calendar-based celebrations and customs around ireland i really like this book the author went by his english name and his irish name uh quivine o'danahor or kevin danaher and this one was published all the way back in 1972 and it's called the year in ireland irish calendar customs we read from this i read from this on several occasions when we would have been doing for instance episodes on Samhain, episodes on bialtana uh, celebrations in particular uh and, and perhaps some of the lunasa stuff as well and um, it's quite a comprehensive collection of lore from around the country collected uh in all manner of ways from newspapers from um, the Folklore Commission archives, uh, uh, direct by word of mouth. Uh, Danaher was well travelled back in his day. Uh, I think he's long dead now. Um, this beautiful book by Kevin Danaher describes how the round of the year, with its cycle of festivals and seasonal work, was observed in the Ireland of yesteryear. We follow the rhythm of the year from New Year to Easter, May Day to Harvest and Christmas, along with the chain of High Days and Feast Days, St. Bridget's Days, the Borrowed Days, Midsummer, St. Swithin's Day, Lunasa, the Pattern Day, Samhain, Martinmas and Christmas. The rich and warm life of Irish folk tradition unfolds the work of farm and fishing boat, belief and usage, feasting and merrymaking. Picturesque customs are revealed, some forgotten, some forbidden, some still familiar, such as the making of Bridget's Cross, marriage divinations, watching the dancing of the sun on a hilltop on Easter morning, going to the Skelligs, cock throwing bull baiting herring processions the swimming of the horses on lunasa and many others a multi-colored tapestry now the only thing i don't know i can't help you with whether that book is still in print or not or whether it has been reprinted of course a quick search should help us with that 
uh, what's it called? What did I say called? The Year in Ireland. The Year in Ireland, Danaher, D-A-N-A-H-E-R. Okay, there's a copy there on ABE Books uh, for £17.35. Um, a- 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 ABE Books.co.uk, and there's another copy for £22.98, which let's call it £23. So there are copies available in the UK. There's one available in the, in the USA there. British price is given as £26.18, so I imagine that would be something like $35. There are copies of it available, but it's not exactly the cheapest, but a wonderful, wonderful book to have in your collection. If you want to learn about how things were celebrated, particularly in the past, you know, a giggle snort, says Caroline. I was trying to hold a straight face when I said it. A house just full of books, yes. Can't, can't get a bigger house unless it's a hotel. Yeah, I intend to have a sort of a massive library at some point. Um, uh, Caroline Dash has top, let's make it the top 100 books, to which Caitlin says top 100,000 books. <laughs> uh, Mavanri says, I'm going to have to catch up on the videos and find out what the last 20 years. I'm planning to put it all together into a document on the website. Um, when the series is ended, the mini series within a series, as it were. So, uh, hopefully, um, I can do that on Amazon US $33.25 the year in Ireland. There you go, Lexi. Thanks for that. Yeah, a great book. Uh, wonderful, lovely, lovely book. Ah, now it's getting harder now because it's like you know, so much, so much, so much, so much. And you're like, where do I put this? You know. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, mm. yeah, so, um, Another very good book, and it's very accessible and available as a reprint because the original would be quite expensive, is another book by our very good friend who we've become quite familiar with, Patrick Weston Joyce. P.W. Joyce, we were reading and we've interrupted the series uh, based where we're, we're reading his book on um, the, uh, the uh, social customs of Ireland um, to do this mini series. And he also did the place names of Ireland in three volumes. But this is a very nice book. Um, hopefully, it's still available as a reprint. Give me one second. And it is the one that is called Ancient Celtic Romances by P.W. Joyce. Uh, that's number 23. Before I tell you about it, I just need to carefully note the numbers so that when I come to compile the list in the end of the se series, uh, that it will be there. Now, let me just quickly check before I get too excited about recommending it. Ancient Celtic Romances. Yes, 99 pence on abebooks.co.uk. So there you go. There are, there are modern reprints available secondhand so you should be able to pick it up cheaply uh translated from the gaelic originally published let me see or originally published in 1894 and this is a 1997 edition published by park gate books limited uh, london let me just check that that's sorry london house London, yes, 1997. So originally published 1894. Um, so what is contained within it? The following stories are contained within it. Uh, the fate of the children of Lear or the four white swans. The fate of the children of Turin. Uh, we've read both of those as mini series, mini series on live Irish myths. Um, the overflowing of Loch Ney and the story of L uh, Liban, Liban, L I B A N. I wonder is that pronounced Liban because the B is lenited. Uh, Liban the mermaid, Conla of the golden hair and the fairy maiden, the voyage of Mile Dune, 
which we read, didn't we, as a series, uh, I'm pretty sure. The Fairy Palace of the Quicken Trees. The Pursuit of the Gila Dacker and His Horse. The Pursuit of Jermud and Grania. The Chase of Shlev Cullen, which is Shlev Gullion. The Chase of Shlev Fuad. Uh, Oshin and Chirnanog, or The Last of the Fena. And The Voyage of the Sons of Okora. So uh, that runs to just over 400 pages, but actually a little bit more than that, almost 450 pages. So if you can get that for 99 pence, I mean, I think that's a steal. That's a, a great book to to swell your knowledge of uh, Irish uh, mythology. But as I say, particularly in reference to um, the, um, well, romances, is, yeah. They're not all that romantic, but some of them are quite sad and tragic, you know. But Van Ray says, yes, one of my favourites, The Voyage of Mild Dune, Wild. Yeah, some strange, almost, I think we got the sense, didn't we? Um, the Voyage of Mild Dune and The Voyage of Brendan are sort of similar in that there's islands involved. But The Voyage of Mild Dune, you almost got the impression that there was some hallucinogenic stuff going on, you know. Um, Kevin... Oh, Danaher is fabulous. I worked on some of his primary works in his files at the National Archive, says Josie. Wow. He was a lovely man and very passionate about Irish folkways. Brilliant. Uh, Marcus is saying, do you know, do you, do you much, do you know much about the Irish monster, the do do Dover, the Dower Who? And does other sources of folklore mention the beast? It's basically our Loch Ness monster, perhaps an episode on the list of monsters. Yeah, the Dower Who is like, I, I think that's the Irish word for an otter, uh, but it's also the water hound is literally what it means, the Dower Who. Um, Michael, Michael Quirk, the woodcarver in Sligo, is very interested in that creature and was the first one to sort of really properly bring it to my attention. Don't know a huge amount about it. You're right about monsters. We should, I mean, I think we've been talking about doing an episode on that for a while. I've done the Mata. I mean, I've spoken about it, I think, on many occasions. They aren't romances in the academic sense, but they are some lovely stories. That's supposed to be a respected translation. There you go. Thanks, uh, Caitlin. Yes, indeed. Um, good. Right. Uh, we're making good progress now. And, of course, I'm about to screw things up completely by not knowing what to put in where in this list next. Um, yeah, there's there's some very good books here, right? Uh, let me let me just have to just make sure that I have account. I'm taking account of everything that's on my list and not leaving out anything that would be. Oh, yeah. Jeez, this is going to be hard. So I've watched seven more to do in this episode. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay that's one so i'm going to grab that one and then going to grab mm. yeah yes oh yes of course um So this is an older book. Mm. Mm. Give me a second. No. Not that one, the other one. Right. <laughs> I'm prevaricating a little bit, I will be honest. Give me a second. Uh, 
um, just conscious of not exhausting this 10, this tier, as it were. This is the third tier. And then saying, oh, no, that really should have been higher when I get to the next tier. You know, I want to make sure to do as much justice as possible to books that really should be, you know. Yeah. I was going to say, this isn't any more difficult than it has been. The first two episodes were equally difficult in terms of making sure that stuff was in the right place in the list. Okay, so there's a really brilliant book that has to... It, it, perhaps for you, some of you, if you've read it, it should be in a higher a tier. It should be in the top 10 or the top 20. Um, I just happen to think this is fantastic. Um, Yeah, so this is uh, this is much bigger than just a mythological work. Um, it is a work that has quote disturbing implications for society. It's a masterpiece. It's very scholarly, but brilliantly written. Uh, it contains such terrific insight um it's it's an intellectual tour de force but you will still learn much and there's much in terms of insight not just into mythology and uh, some of the major figures but broader themes and especially relating to religion and the religious history of ireland and the power of the church and the patriarchy etc etc Anyway, I better get round to announcing it. Uh, and this is number 20. It's number 24. 24. It is called The Serpent and the Goddess, Women, Religion and Power in Celtic Ireland. And the author is Mary Condren. Mary, if you're watching, um, I'd love to see more work from your pen. Uh, when first published in 1989, Mary Condren's brilliantly researched account of the decline of female power in Western civilization provoked considerable controversy and debate. Always the sign of, uh, I think, a successful author. If somebody is debating, uh, your work and it's if it provokes controversy exploring uncharted territory it precipitated an unprecedented amount of research and publication on celtic religious origins and societal structures over a decade later and now published in ireland for the first time actually it was uh i'll just tell you about uh, before i complete it was originally published in 1989 and uh, this is a 2002 uh, publication by new island books um for the first time, the Serpent and the Goddess is widely regarded as the preeminent text in its field, a classic study of gender, power, and spirituality. Working her way through the corresponding ages of Eve, Bridget, and Mary, Condren traces both the rise of patriarchal consciousness and its disturbing implications for society. By reclaiming the matri centered culture that has been written out of history, the author offers us a view of a more optimistic future, reawakening to us the possibilities of an enriched female consciousness. And uh, some of the things that the critic or the, re, uh, the reviewer said a pioneering and passionate book that cries out to be read and reread. Uh, a very exciting and pioneering study, a monumental contribution to the feminist work of re revisioning history, not revising history, revisioning history, provides a wealth of material for those engaged in the ongoing process of uncovering the true stories masked by patriarchal scholarship. Uh, 
A powerful indictment of patriarchal consciousness, ultimately a plea to recover a woman-centered, life-loving culture before it is too late. Um, Lexi says, required reading in my college classroom. Um, and yes, excellent book. Mavanwe says, ah, this has been recommended to me before. Great reminder, I must read. Michael Trott is in the house. Good day to the group on the challenge of recommending Irish mythology, Celtology, gods and goddesses or archaeology, which now a list is up to 24 AC grand. Yeah, and, and struggling, to be honest. Um, I'm just, I've just remembered. I just have I've written another name down. I just remembered another book that will have to be on the list somewhere. Um, yeah. So this is, uh, there's a chapter called Bridget of Kildare from Goddess to Saint. Yeah, it's brilliantly written um, and, and it contains brilliant insights, you know. Um, and yeah, look, this isn't a book just for women. Uh, I mean, you heard what I've said in terms of there's a, there's a much a broader theme about well the patriarchy and uh what the loss of a matri centered uh worldview has meant for the world yeah brilliant piece of research so that's a deeper stuff so that's not necessarily that's why that's not in the top 10 or the top 20 not because it's not a brilliant book which it is but because we are trying to get people to learn about Irish mythology and we don't want to start them with the heavy stuff first. At this point, you're starting to get familiar with the material and it's good to go uh, further, as it were. And uh, just to lighten things a little bit now, uh, originally part of the Thomas Davis lectures uh, delivered on Radio Aaron, which is uh, the forerunner basically to rte uh, radio and this was published in 1959 and i have two copies of it believe it or not this is, this is a 1968 reprint it is called irish sagas and the author is miles dillon and uh, there's my two copies of it uh, two different uh two 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 different uh printings of it in, in different eras um these essays were originally broadcast as a series of Thomas Davis lectures. The editor, Miles Dillon, and 10 other leading Celtic scholars, D.A. Binchy, R.A. Brannock, James Carney, Nora Chadwick, David Green, Gerard Murphy, M.A. O'Brien, Brian O'Queeve, Maureen O'Daly, and E.G. Quinn, provide an introduction to the prose tales of ancient Ireland. Through their translations of these heroic sagas, a vivid picture emerges of the worlds of the mythological cycle with stories of the pre-Christian gods, the Ulster cycle of tales of great warriors, the Fenian cycle of inspiring noble youth, and the kingly cycle in which some historical figures have been vested with the immort immortality of legend. Uh, and so uh, the book contains uh, chapters on Tuchmark Etain by Miles Dillon, Cot My Chura, which is the Battle of My Chura by Brian O'Queeve, Achtra Fergusa MacLeachy by D.A. Vinci, Longus MacNushi, the uh, fate of the children of Ishnuk, uh, Fled Brickrin, which is Brickroo's Feast, Shkela Mucha, Mac Daho, the story of Mac Daho's pig, Toynbo Kulnia, which is uh, the famous saga, the cattle raid of Cooley, Tugal, Tugal Brunya Da Derga, the, the destruction of Da Derga's hostel, Akal of Shinorak, which is the tale of the, the or the colloquy of the ancients. That's on my, there's a translation of that that's on my list. Uh, Jirma de August Grania. We had that in PW Joyce's Celtic Romances. Um, that's the pursuit of Jirma and Grania. Caught my Macrima or Macriva, uh, the uh, the battle of uh, my my Criva and uh, Fingal Ronan by David Green to round things out. A uh, short book and uh, not heavy reading. Um, you have that read in no time. Uh, 25 is. Uh, Irish Sagas by Miles Dillon. Right, now, um, so we're halfway through this 10. Uh, but before I go on, is that available? 
Miles Dillon. Is that available? Uh, it's available in the USA on ABE Books for the British uh, sterling equivalent of £29.26. Uh, it's available in Ireland from Kenny's Bookshop at uh, the British pound equivalent of £31.75. Uh, wonder is it on Amazon.com? Let's have a look. Uh, Irish sagas, Miles Gillen. Doesn't look like there's a modern reprint of it, unfortunately. No, it's not immediately available, as far as I can see, on Amazon. Uh, Caitlin Moon says, can confirm that those are mostly very respected big-name scholars. Yes, indeed. I think D.A. Binchy was best known for his work on the Brehan Laws, on the law tracts. Um, Nora Chadwick co-authored a book. Uh, about the Celtic world with Miles Dillon and uh, some very well known names in there, absolutely. Um, right, I think I'm up to date. Uh, now comes a bit of a challenge. So, Yeah, this is difficult. It's difficult. It's difficult to put something on the list knowing that you're squeezing other stuff a little bit further down the list. And I don't want to insult anyone, especially people that I know who are still alive, authors who may feel that their their work should be, you know, up there somewhere. Let me just have a quick look here now. Yeah, one that is a, a little bit lighter. Um, um, not in size, because the modern reprint is a beautiful, heavy uh, work, but... Um, Lighter and probably not as scholarly, but I have to be very careful when I say that. We did speak about this at length. In fact, I think I did some reading from it. Anyway, uh, straight to it. This is Lady Wiles, Ancient Legends, Mystic Charms and Superstitions of Ireland. This is a modern reprint. And as you can see, the Wibbelin cover is beautifully embossed with the gold lettering and the Celtic knotwork. It's its really, it's a fabulously beautiful gift book that comes in a presentation box, you know? I just think that's fabulous, you know? So undoubtedly, this is absolutely available. Um, there are copies of it, for instance, I see them at the Visitor Centre in Brunabonia. Uh, this edition published in 2021. Um, actually, don't know if this book says when the original was published i don't think it does lady wild of course um in the 19th this is probably 19th century lady wild um and her husband were were, were were very well known in dublin society um what was unusual about her was her sim sympathies for the irish uh, nationalist uh, independence movement um given her own uh background and status um sir william wilde her husband uh, was a very famous antiquarian and doctor uh, but uh, later became embroiled in significant controversy um and uh, whose name 
uh, was quite muddied after afterwards. Uh, of course, they are the parents of Oscar Wilde, who would be uh, a, a very famous uh, Irish uh, writer, buried in Père Lachaise Cemetery in France. I know that because I've seen his grave. Um, so um, this is a lovely... I think I was saying it before, you know, you see this, you have to be very careful not to, speaking of patriarchal viewpoints, you have to be very careful not to put Lady Wilde in, in a box, as it were, literally. You know, that, you know, sometimes she would be introduced in conversation or on, on the subject of her work as the wife of William Wilde. Well, she was a, a a woman and a scholar in her own right. It has been suggested that a lot of what made it into this book had been actually collected by her husband as he went around the country, uh, collecting stories and collecting information. Um, but I don't know, maybe she collected most of it herself. Maybe we're doing her a disservice. Um, but it's a beautiful book. And they're all very, very short chapters, mostly mini chapters, some of them only uh, a couple of pages long um different sections the only thing that i didn't like about this 2021 was i compared it to a pdf copy of the original and this doesn't have all the material from the original i think the original is in two volumes and this does not contain all of the uh um all of the chapters but um yeah, a nice, easy and sort of broad stroke uh, look at Irish mythology and folklore. Um, and in, in a really, really, really beautifully presented book, you know. Yeah. So that is going into position, what did I, it's 26, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Wow. Um, now, there are so many. So from light back to not heavy, but just a little bit more in depth. Lady Wild is nineteen dollars sixty on Amazon US. Says Lexi. Thanks for that, Lexi. Thank you for filling us in on that. Um, it's like your top fifty rabbit holes, says Rex. Well, I mean, each one invites, you know, a, 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 an exploration, as it were. Okay, I'm just conscious of the fact that's twice well as that 26. So I have four more in this tier. So what must absolutely be in this tier? I'm just scribbling. There's one that should be on the list. Oh, yeah, there's that one as well. And that one. Choose is getting harder. It's not getting easier, it's getting harder. Um What has to be definitely in this tier, and there's lots competing for it. Um,
Right, this might seem like a surprise uh, uh, entry, but it isn't really, it shouldn't be. And if I think back, um, it's because it has been very important in my own work. So um, I'm going to probably call this one dictionaries and not just uh, uh, keep it to one because to place several dictionaries in different parts of a of a list of 50 you know um um yeah anyway this is um folklore berla agus gelga by mckenna l mckenna sj who was a, a jesuit um published i believe in 1927 it's a very, very big dictionary. 1935, it's the Deneen folklore that was originally published in 1927. So this is a dictionary that runs to 2... over 1,500 pages. <laughs> it is a big, 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 big volume. And unlikely to be obtainable um at uh, anything less than maybe 40 or 50 euros and you probably pay more for it um i i think was very fortunate um in that this was one of the i think so i'm I think i'm not i, I didn't uh, sign or date it i think i'm pretty sure i got this back in around the year 2000 or the early 2000s because you see the difference between this and Deneen and uh, the Balria and all the others is that a lot of the other folklore, which and folklore is the Irish word for dictionary, they're Irish English dictionaries. This is English Irish. So you can look up a word and find out not just the Irish word for it, but the beauty of these early 20th century folklore uh, or dictionaries is that. They give you an awful lot of information. Uh, so uh, how the word fits into a phrase, for instance. So I'll just give you an example, one that really sticks out for me, is that if you look up the word moon, <laughs> Caitlin, uh, M-O-O-N, as in that thing that shines at night in the sky, our satellite, our little uh, companion planet that uh, so affects the tides and many other things here on Earth. Well, there are so many uh, phrases. Uh, moon rising, ta on Gaelic or on Ray egg, erge, etc. New moon on Gaelic nua. There is a new moon, ta on Ray guinche, gainche, and nocht. Full moon on Gaelic lawn, umlawn. Uh, and of course, it gives you the dialects uh, or where particular phrases were prevalent so connacht ulster and munster irish uh, ta she uh, na lawn ray or ta she lawn own ta gialach lawn own ta on gialach lawn ta um lawn gialaga own ta lawn gialaga own crescent moon coron gialach on gialach biorach waxing and waning on gialach e chacht I mean, this is just, I've just read a fraction of the entries for Moon. Um, I just think if you're getting, so we're, we're into the third tier of the top 50 and you're at the stage where you've read a lot of the stories, you, you know about the two of the Danon, you've read the Ulster Cycle, or a lot of it, you've read the romances and the tragedies, you've read about Finn McCool, you've read about the Red Branch Knights, you've read about the Kings of Tara, you've read some of the Dunchenicus, you've read some of the Annals, you, you know, um, the dictionaries are invaluable, and they have been for me in my work, it's pretty much since day one, uh, and that's a very good place to start. Now, if you don't want to spend 50 quid and you don't want to have a big volume like this sitting on your shelf, uh, the Dictionary of the Irish Language Online, D-I-L dot I-E, is a remarkably brilliant resource. Uh, you cannot be without it. Uh, 
it's one that a, a, a lot of uh, scholarly people would read. So the other of the sort of uh, commonly referenced dictionaries would be Deneen, and Deneen is an Irish English folklore Gaelga agus Berla. Uh, so you're looking up the Irish word, uh, and of course in the old uh, script with the shavus, uh, etc., etc. And this one has been reprinted and is available from the T Irish Text Society. Um, I think that's still in print. You can get the original from I think it's 1927, um, and pay 50 or 100 quid for it. Or you can get a, a modern reprint uh, for something approaching between 40 and 50 euros, probably. Um, uh, uh, let me just quickly make sure that that's true. Uh, publications. Um, the main series. Um, D I N, I think it's double N, double E. D I N N E E N. course there's keating's history of ireland there's so much stuff it's just it's just ridiculous this is going to become a top 100 and even at that stage it's going to be yeah i don't know which part of the irish text society the subsidiary series yeah I, oh here we go english dictionary um but, but, but uh, originally published 1927 45 euros and that is available at the link i'm about to paste as a uh, link or as a comment should i say um so the dictionaries folklore um would be what, what, what is that 20, 27 27 Deneen mckenna the dictionary of the irish language online and um, there are some older uh, dictionaries which are helpful too uh, there's an armstrong one second, let me just make sure I'm right about this. Um, there's an Armstrong, I think. Um, and is there a Shaw? Is it Shaw? Yeah, or a Armstrong's dictionary, uh, which was published in a year that I'll have to translate because it's um, M D C C C X X V. Which is 1825. So there's the Armstrong and I think it's Shaw. Let me just double check. I have PDF copies of those. Shaw. Uh, 1780 was his um yeah so they're they're helpful i hope um monica had a music lesson that sounds like a wonderful excuse to be late to be honest you know um no i'm really really in difficulty now because i'm like Yeah, I think this one has to be in this tier. Um, talked about it on many occasions. I believe there's a book talk uh, episode about it on the YouTube channel. Um, yeah. Yeah. This is one that... Uh, it kind of has to be on your list and you'll hear a lot of people talking about it and it's been perpetually in print since it was first published it's 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 somewhat controversial but not for the wrong reasons it provokes debate um it should be able to get it for cheap um second hand if you want new if you want first published in 
and this is a 1995 print. Anyway, I'll get to it. It is called How the Irish Saved Civilization by Thomas Cahill. The, unstor the untold story of Ireland's heroic role from the fall of Rome to the rise of medieval Europe. A shamelessly engaging, effortlessly scholarly, utterly refreshing history of the origins of the Irish soul and its huge contribution to Western culture. Not a work about Irish mythology and folklore per se, uh, but uh, let's just say that once you read it, you'll know why it's on the list and you won't regret uh, putting it into your collection. Um, it kind of has to be there, you know. Uh, there's no way that it couldn't be. Um, yeah, that's number 28. So I have two more to go, and I'm, uh, I knew it, well, I think I'm doing okay, but. Very, very difficult to I have to relegate some people into the next tier down. Um, and um, I just I find that very difficult. But anyway, there there you go. Uh, Cal is a great writer, says Lexi. Uh, and Adina agrees. That's a good book. Excellent. Caitlin's recommendation, says Manrin. There it is, says Caitlin. Caitlin, uh, Miss Melanie has that one. Uh, Caitlin recommended it, apparently. There you go. Um, yeah. Uh, every it's like every collection of books relating to Irish myth and legend should have a copy of Tyne Bo Cunha in it, whether it be Thomas Kinsella's or Kieran Carson's or uh, Cecilia Rahali's. You should have a copy of Tyne Bo Cunha. Well, every every library should have a copy of Thomas Cahill. I'm really in difficulty because I'm having to relegate somebody who I don't want to relegate, but at the same time, I have to make a decision as to what what goes what goes in this tier and what doesn't. And it's that's how close it is. So look, don't take this as a, as I keep saying, don't take it as a an absolute. Uh, these positions are, as it were, a movable feast. Okay, so this one I, I just love. Um, I, I, and the reason I'm looking is I'm not entirely sure of its position on the. Just give me one second while I find it. Um, um, where are you? Should be up there. Should be up there. spoken about it before on uh, probably several episodes. Um, uh, did it, did I can't find it. Oh. Found it. Yes. So in position number 29, In Search of the Awesome Mystery, Lore of Megalithic, Celtic and Christian Ireland by Sean O'Dwin, the late great Antahar Sean O'Dwin, who was attached to the um, uh, Benedictine uh, Monastery of, uh, what's it called? Glenstall. It's Benedictine, isn't it? Um, Glenstall Abbey, um, the same place, yeah, or OSB, Order of Saint Benedict, Benedict, um, 
the same place as Mark Hederman, isn't it? But uh, on Tahar Shom Abdin was known as the the Druid uh, because of his uh, sort of vast grasp of, uh, you know, the the entire corpus, as it were, of mythological material and religious uh, material. Um, a masterly overview of the stories, places, images, traditions, and continuing practices spanning religious living in Ireland from the earliest times. It contains explorations of the early megalithic sites like Brunabonia, the enchanted lake of Loch Gur, Loch Gur, midsummer fires at St. John's Eve, and fascinating insights into the mindset and attitudes of people of Ireland from long before Celtic spirituality came on the scene until the present day, where remnants and survivals of those earlier times can still be discerned among the people. A beautifully written book, uh, again, very scholarly and uh, incredible, um, you know, when you consider uh, the, uh, the man's background, you know, in the church um, writing so openly and open-mindedly about what what the church for so long would have called paganism, you know, um, fascinating stuff. Um, I'm very lucky that uh, my, mine is a signed copy. I met um, on Tahar Odin in 2012 or 2013 uh, down in Wexford at an event and I brought it with me and I asked him to sign it for me and he is now deceased. So I'm very, I'm very uh, honored and uh, lucky um yeah uh, a wonderful wonderful piece of work and uh worthy of a of probably a higher place on the list uh than 29 but there's just so much um uh, competition for the spaces uh, and this is the the, the 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 crunch comes now because i have to pick one in favor of another and and i suppose next week i will explain and uh I will apologize to the people I've put into the fourth tier who should really be in the set the third tier or even the second tier, you know. Awesome mystery unavailable in US on Amazon. I'd really like to have that, says Lexi Erickson. Um, yeah, that's a pity, isn't it? Um I don't know if you've ever, ever used a ABE books. I mean, well, if you're using um Amazon. Amazon owns ABE books, so I, I can't imagine you um, uh, won't want to use ABE books um, in search of the awesome mystery. Unavailable. Good secondhand hand shops, too. I mean, secondhand bookstores are sometimes the best place to find these things you know uh kathy may deo is in the house hello there we're in the library should i say kathy may hope you're in good form um yeah so i have to pick one more and i'm having to i really am um and if there's one that you think you know that you're screaming out to yourself this definitely should be in the top 20 or the top 10 or the top whatever forgive me because it's just Oh, this is just so difficult. Um, yeah. I mean, I haven't even spoken about the annals. Well, I know I've mentioned them several times, but like the dictionaries, you could put the annals into one slot. Yeah, I'm going to have to pick one. So I'm going to pick it. And it is, I'm pretty sure. Uh...
certainly worthy of the third tier and probably higher but you just have to do these things i'm just conscious for instance of uh, our good friend morgan daimler and our good friend moncom mcgann um, and the likes whose work hasn't been featured yet you know that uh, it's absolutely got nothing to do with the quality of your work um a lot of these would be interchangeable anyway um i happen to think this is a beautiful book if you want to know where it is that irish mythology as we know it today mostly comes from uh, I'm not talking about folklore. I'm not talking about the stories that were still on the tongues of Irish people uh, a century ago or less. And the stuff that's still present today and collected by the likes of Michael Fortune in folklore.ie. Um, I'm talking about the myths, the stuff that would have died if it hadn't been written down. And of course, it was mostly written down in the Middle Ages by um, ecclesiastical and lay scribes, uh, former bards in the monasteries uh, and so to learn about how we know we, for instance how do we know about dinshanicus material how do we know laura gawala uh how how do we know uh tokmark Eitain? where has that story come from if it hasn't survived orally right into the 21st century and the book is uh monica is offering a free baron lesson because apparently i'm uh, doing the tappity tap thing uh, Mavanna has to go because, and luckily for her because otherwise uh, she'd be clicking a load of uh, order book uh, place order what time are we on oh yeah we're nearly an hour and a half I've been going on long enough um, if anybody finds an online source where in search of the awesome mystery can be purchased preferably at not a ridiculous price hello wifey um please uh, do share a link in the comments because several people are looking for it uh, and it's out of print anyway drum roll for book number 30 on our list um you're, you're i'm really annoying you now you're like will you just get on with it we could have been finished this ages ago i know right anyway here we go By my good friend Michael Slaven, who, if you're a patron, you would have seen the interview I did with him a couple of years back. Um, that's still only available for patrons, but there is a very brief um, um, clip where he speaks about his spiritual beliefs. Michael is also the author of the Book of Tara, which is a brilliant book about the Hill of Tara. But this is wonderful because it is well i just think the uh, the presentation of it is beautiful it, it's it's full color throughout it contains a lot of pictures from the actual um uh, manuscripts for instance there and that is the the great uh, uh, of, of uh, a sheet of vellum uh, or a page of vellum from the great book of lecham um contents of the book of the O'Kellys. Ah, it's just a wonderful, wonderful uh, piece of work. And in fact, um, one of the things that Michael told me in our conversation, uh, the ancient Brehan Laws, one of the things he told me was that this was the book of which he was most proud. Um and I suppose an indication of uh, Michael's own, uh, that's the Book of Leinster, an indication of Michael's own sort of, he's not a scholar, like me, he's a, he, he doesn't have letters after his name, or I don't think he has a, a doctorate or a master's degree or anything. He'd just been reading books for years and years and years. Uh, but he's very well respected among uh the foremost scholars uh and uh, the launch of this book i understand 
was held in the Royal Irish Academy, actually, in 2005, I think it was published. I think, I think, I think. Let me just double check. Yeah, 2005. Merlin Publishing. And uh, published by Wolfhound Press, which is an imprint of Merlin Publishing. Uh, Wolfhound is, I think, an, an, an old Irish, uh, um, uh, a well established uh, Irish publisher. Now, the only thing is, is that available? Um, uh, Vanway just hung on until I mentioned that one because he was saying, I can't leave now. I have to hear what he says. Um, the Ancient Books of Ireland. Yeah, where is it? Where is it available now? The Ancient Books of Ireland, Slaven. That's how that name is pronounced, by the way. It's not Slavin, it's Slaven. It's uh, from the English, sorry, it's from the Irish, Slavin. Um, it's available on Maguire's. Um, add to cart, Maguire's on the Hill of Tara. So I'll paste that link in. Uh, for the princely sum of €29.95, Euros 95 cent, let's call that €30, Euros. Uh, well worth every cent, folks. It is a beautiful work. Beautiful, beautiful book. Can't be without it. But uh, you may say that deserves to occupy a much higher position on the list. You may be able to think of other books that should be in this tier. I can also. So as I say, it's not hard and fast. It's a movable feast. Uh, brilliant choice, says Melanie. Well, I'm glad you think so, uh, Melanie, and I hope you enjoyed yourself the other day. I think that's you, isn't it? That's um, Melanie, the same Melanie that was on the tour on Saturday. It's available at his bookstore at Tarot. Oh, yeah, of course, uh, uh, Debbie, silly me for not saying that. Uh, Michael runs the old bookshop on the Hill of Tara, uh, and it is available in there. The only thing about that is these days, uh, Michael is in his early 90s. Uh, these days, that bookshop the old bookshop on the Hill of Tara is not open uh, full time. It's only open. Uh, it's closed some days of, of the week, you know. Um, but anyway. Yeah. So many more. I'm beginning to think this list could go to 70 or 80. I mean, I said that last week. But I think what we'll do is... When we've passed 50, we'll just do an episode where I'll just name as many as possible. I'll just pull all the rest of the books off the shelf and go, yep, this is a good one. Yes, this, yeah, this, uh, you know, I should be able to get this cheap and it would be a worthwhile addition to your, you know. Um, it's probably a, a top 100 list, to be honest, you know. Uh, Caitlin is asking, anyone remember the movie Ever After? There's a quote I love. What is your favorite book? I could no sooner pick a favorite star in the sky. How do you pick a favorite? Like, I, I'm having trouble picking the top 50, you know? Um, Elaine says, I love that bookstore, but who wouldn't? It's an absolute treasure trove. And, of course, part of the reason is because it's not, not like most bookshops. Michael, being a scholar, being so well read, being so knowledgeable about all of the subjects, you know, myth and history and uh, toponymy and, you know, geology and literature and poetry and, you know, philosophy and, you know, nationalism and, you know, oh, all that stuff. I mean, all that stuff. He actually curates that bookshop. He goes to a lot of auctions, uh, some of them online, a lot of them in person. And he spots stuff and he goes, yeah, I need, I want that, I want that, I want that. Um, so he has curated a wonderful, wonderful collection of, of books. If there's anything you need in relation to Irish mythology, especially Irish literature, Irish history, Irish culture. Uh, if Michael hasn't got it or can't get it for you, <laughs> then nobody can. 70 euros in Switzerland, says Monica. For Is that for the, uh, the Slaven book, is it? You should be able to, well, I mean, what I would be inclined to do is order it um, from one of the Irish websites, from Maguire's, and uh, the shipping won't be any more than a tenner, you know. 
How many books have you bought from Michael's shop? Too many. I, uh, I hesitate to go in because I know it's going to cost me money, you know, and I'm going to go my way. Um, I would say in relation to, uh, there's probably a couple of hundred. I mean, this, this, I haven't counted my, my collection of books in a long time. I reckon I'm probably up at 1500 books here in this library. Uh, I'd say a couple of hundred of them have come from Michael's shop. Like, so for instance, those two copies of uh, Miles Dillon's Irish Sagas, I'm almost sure both of those came from Michael's shop. Um, and the surefire way of ascertaining whether they did or not, or any of my books, is to look up in the right-hand corner of the first page inside the cover. The, the price will be handwritten in pencil. Yep. So there is Irish Sagas by Miles Dillon. And in the top corner of the first page, is written in pencil 10 euros that definitely came from michael slavin's shop on the hill of tara so we're at 30 and the difficult thing is that um as i go along there are more books being added there's stuff that i haven't seen uh that i'm remembering um but look it's all good i'm sure some of you have no intention of ever uh uh, trying to uh, acquire all these uh, works um, because you're sane and you're normal. Uh, but some of us are quite uh, obsessive about uh, things, you know. And I said, yep, yeah, brilliant tour. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. And it was a lovely uh, group of people. So look forward to doing it again. Helvetia is a very snobby and expensive lady. Uh, Brendan says, better late than ever, just in time for the end credits. Yeah, sorry to miss you tonight, Brendan. I did offer. I said earlier on, give me the number for your boss and I'll ring them. As I listen, <laughs> this man is needed. You know, it could be drugs, says Kit. Well, I mean, I don't, you know, I have never. I have, do you know what? I have never even smoked a joint. <laughs> That's how ridiculously, st stupidly nerdy I am. My My drugs are books, you know. Like you could be spending money on cocaine or alcohol or betting on the horses. <laughs> At least I've got something to show for my money, you know. Uh, anyway, I'm glad you enjoyed that, Lexi, and that uh, you have some of the books in your collection, which is brilliant, especially the Condren book, The Serpent of the Goddess. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful book. Dawn needs to learn about the Neolithic axe factories of Ireland. I can't direct you on that. Who is the definitive author on Axe Heads in Ireland? Is it Gabriel Cooney? Um, or did he head up the... Um, there was an Axe Head project, wasn't there? Um, anyway, uh, yeah, I can't really help you on that. It's not a subject I'm, 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 I'm very um, up on. Uh, Dromf says, I smoke dill weed only. I don't know what I, I I've never taken a drag of I mean that's right. I used to smoke. I smoked cigarettes, you know. I did a bit of vaping. Uh I drink, as you know, a, a glass of wine and, and a whiskey and, and the odd beer very, very occasionally. But uh never taken any drugs whatsoever. I've never even had a magic mushroom. <laughs> My drugs are books too. I'm right with you. I barely take aspirin. Never never any drugs for me. Don't smoke anything. You're better off. Works as insulation too, says Eva. You're talking about the books. <laughs> yeah, if you're, if you're cold, just wrap your books around you. Tape them to your body. Uh, that sounds a bit weird, doesn't it? Yeah, Anthony, don't take it that far. Um, thanks, Anne McCallum. Um, stay warm, everybody. See you all next week. Yes, indeed. And stay warm yourself. And we'll see you all next week. Rex says, I'm not normal. Well, I think, in fairness, look, don't get offended, everybody, but I think anybody who's here and who's been repeatedly watching, uh, none of you are normal. But in, in a, such a wonderfully brilliant way, why? who would want to be normal? You know, in a world that's full of, or that can be full of monotony and homogeneity, uh, be something different. Be a nerd. Be a bookworm. Be a, be a reader, you know?
Mariana, I'm not sure if I said hello to you today. Thanks, Anthony, for sharing the book list, which we can select from. Exactly. You don't have to get them all. Somebody, somebody's shouting back at the screen. Yes, we do. We have to get every single one. <laughs> Lexi says, I so live in the wrong country. Yeah. Look, I suppose, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm very conscious, as you know, of uh, where I live and how lucky I am and how privileged I am. It's, it's, oh my God, it's 43 Celsius in, in uh, Melbourne, Adelaide. Melbourne. Oh, I've, oh, I've done this before, Adele. I forget where you are. It's so insulting. It'd be like saying to me, Anthony, you live in Dundalk, don't you? No. Um, so I apologize for that, but good morning to you, Adele. Uh, at the end of the episode, uh, 43. It's 38 Celsius. It's 38 degrees warmer than it is here in Ireland. So enjoy that. Stay safe, everyone. Thank you indeed, Wayne. Have a good one. I fell asleep and missed a full open air concert of Santana because some guys nearby were smoking weed. I was so cross. <laughs> That's a great story, Monica. <laughs> Valerie is saying Happ happily with the not normal here. Great show. Yeah, I mean, be different. Be a nerd, you know. Uh, Mark Gordon says, you might say I'm abnormally normal. Adelaide. Got to get that into my head, Adele. I will honestly get it right one of these days. But good morning to you and good night from the Boyne Valley, where I am about to uh, go QRT, as we say in ham radio, and say 7-3 to all of you, um, and put the bins out uh, and do whatever little bit of chores have to be done. And I have a little job of putting, there should be 10, but in fact, I took more off the shelves. I, I have to put 15 or 20 books back in their places on the shelves behind me. I know shocking hard thing to have to do anyway thank you for joining us uh, this evening uh, don't forget uh to uh sign up to the mailing list on the website i was trying to encourage people to do that today for announcements about uh tours and events uh subscribe to the channel if you're on youtube and please do consider becoming a patron uh, patrons uh, have access to early and exclusive access to a lot of content. Adele Perth says, well, I've moved north, so it's a bit hotter. <laughs> Excuse me. On the edge of the desert. Wow. The whole continent of Australia is, is hot, isn't it? Like, there's no, is there a place in Australia that you would go to cool down? Like, is Tasmania any cooler? No, probably not. Um, got Kelly Nikiali, I didn't say hello to you today. Oh. I don't think I'll have the hiccups now, so I better stop. But uh, a good afternoon to you. Thanks for joining us. As Tommy Tiernan said, that before we had a silence in Ireland, we had fields. We just let the crazy ones roam. <laughs> Excuse me. Right. I have to stop talking. I've got the hiccups. Good night. Seven three. Shock though is at three. Macardical air or food in the crinia. It's Misha Antone. And this has been Live Irishmits 261. Next week, numbers. 31 to 40 on our top 50 books about Irish mythology and folklore. And don't forget, we have to do a separate mini-series fe featuring the top, probably will be another 50, but the top 50 books about Irish archaeology archeolo and history. <sighs> right, I'm gone. I've got a slog of